Welcome back to IGN Live at Gamescom 2018. I'm James Duggan, and joining me is John Block, executive producer of 40 Games, to discuss Metro Exodus. Now, John, your beard is looking long and full, <laughs> more so than when we last spoke, so that must mean that Metro Exodus is uh, getting, getting closer, closer and closer shift. to yeah, release. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us what we're going to be looking at. You brought some gameplay for us. Yeah, so uh, we're showing off a new uh, level here at Gamescom, uh, and it's uh, we, we call it the Taiga, and it's uh, you know takes place in a forest environment. Uh, it's thousands of kilometers away from the Moscow city center, and uh, takes place <coughs> during the season of autumn. Uh, so as you can imagine, uh, because the the journey over this you know through this game takes place over the course of a year, and we see all four seasons, this level is actually pretty far along in the game. That's exciting. So previously, Metro, you know, uh, obviously the core of the franchise is underground, subterranean, but now we're we're venturing out. Uh, into Russia, and you've chosen seasons to articulate that. So are we going to be seeing the same environments uh, in different seasons, or is it just going to kind of time-wise move along in terms of seasons as we're playing? So all the different uh, uh, environments that you'll come to in, in Metro, all the different locations you'll come to in Metro Exodus are going to be unique. They're going to be different. They're going to be um, you know, all sorts of different types of places. And when you arrive at these places, it's going to be a different season. Um, because you know it's it's a long train journey. It take, takes a long time to to, to travel across mm. Russia by train, um, and uh, so each environment's unique, and uh, uh, the environment is in that season at the time. Uh, and you know this one being autumn, you get to you know go around in the forest environment. You see all these uh, you know new colors and and. Uh, uh, you know, trees and you know, the sun's out and things like that. Uh, the, the very unique, um, new experiences. Uh, you know, for Metro, sure. for the Metro series, where you know in the past it was all nuclear winter. You know, cold, covered in snow and ice and everything. Uh, so it's it, it's really been a, uh, you know, <coughs> cool addition I think to the uh, to the series to bring in all these different uh, seasons where we can show different sides of uh, of what life was like. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, in, in post-apocalyptic Russia. So a uh, core pillar of the Metro franchise is, of course, the very creative weaponry, uh, mm -hmm. some of it being cobbled together, some of it being pre-war, and that stuff is generally more valuable. Here we're seeing a crossbow, and you told me before the interview that we've seen a pneumatic crossbow, and I definitely remember the ball-bearing weapon, but uh, this one is a, a traditional crossbow. What can this do in terms of its variance? Can I shoot different bolts? What does it mean in terms of Yeah, so, th so this is the, the Helsing. Uh, it's, it, uh, it's, it's a weapon that's been in the series before. Um, uh, in various different configurations, um, fired bolts, uh, you know, usually uh, by pneumatic, um, uh, you know. Actually. Uh, yeah. And uh, <coughs> this time, you know, you're, you're, you're seeing in, the, in this footage here, it's, uh, you know, actually fired by a bow. Um, there's different upgrades that you can get uh, to change how it fires, to change the, uh, the magazine size. Uh, they'll fire regular, regular bolts and explosive uh, tip bolts, which we showed off uh, for the first time in uh, the E3 announced trailer last year. And in uh, the E3 demo that I played, um, I came up against some fanatics in kind of a church environment, uh, and I was fighting them in a very conventional stealth slash loud metro sense. And at some point, they surrendered, and I didn't know what to make of it. I just kept <laughs> shooting because I was like, I've never seen this happen before. Is this some kind of trick? But it's not. And that actually affected uh, how they reacted to me in the future. So what do those moral decisions mean in terms of the weight of the story? Uh, something that's always been really important to us uh, when uh, making Metro games is, is immersion, um, you know, atmosphere, making the player feel like they're actually stepping into the shoes of Artyom and, and playing... Uh, playing as him and, and developing his personality and determining who he is, what kind of person he is, based on the actions of the player. Um, so that's something that's been a staple of the series, uh, you know, throughout all three games. Um, it's definitely returning this time, um, and this time around, we're actually uh, going to have a lot more opportunities to see how the world uh, and the story reacts to player actions um, and and potentially changes based on what the player does and how the player interacts with people. Um, you know, players are going to come across all different types of uh, of people on this on this journey, different societies, different uh, different factions, different. Um, just you know, random groups of people. Not all of them will be friendly, but not all of them will be purely evil. So mm. you know, the player has to kind of decide how they're going to interact with them. What about the enemies we're fighting right now? What faction is this? Uh, so these are uh, we call them the Children of the Forest, and uh, they've basically been at this. Uh, this is like a uh, you know, a, almost like a summer camp uh, location. Um, and uh, you know, when everything blew up, they kind of you know they were here. Nobody ever came to get them. <coughs> Uh, so they kind of grew up here, and uh, they've they've kind of made a, a home for themselves at this uh, this camp. 
Are they a bit xenophobic, a little bit hostile? That's why we're. Uh, uh, I mean, you know, in general, you're you're coming into their territory, right? So sure. you know, they're like, who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, and then this is a, a night forest environment. We have very different enemies that we're about to see. Talk me through some of the non-human enemies <coughs> that we'll be fighting in Metro Exodus. Sure. I mean, uh, you know, in general, so th so this is actually the same environment. This is just uh, at night. Uh, there's a full day-night cycle uh, that the player can actually rest to to, to change, and that will change. Mm -hmm. Um, you know the types of encounters that the the player can have, uh, or the strategies that they can use in order to uh, you know approach different situations. So right here, the player just uh, we just got attacked by uh, some some mutant wolves. Uh, there's some other animals running around the area. It's uh, <coughs> um, it's kind of since you know it's a it's more of a, like a forest environment. We we wanted to come up with uh, some new. Uh, you know, mutants that made sense because some of the ones that you know you'd see around the Moscow city center wouldn't necessarily you know make sense out here in sure. out here in the forest. We always try to um, you know e everything needs to to fit and 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 make sense and be realistic when when we're creating uh, you know different content. And so like all, all this. Um, uh, <coughs> all, you know all the 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 you know the humans and the um, monsters that exist in this area. We spend a lot of time thinking, you know, who would actually live here? How would, how did they come to be at this point? What grew up here? Um, you know, what mutated here? Uh, it's all um, you know very uh, you know in depth thought process that we have. Uh, you know, when it comes to making sure that everything is really really accurate, which feeds into that immersion. One of my favorite parts of Metro is the concept of not really playing the HUD, instead having the HUD integrated <coughs> into various parts. Uh, of your kit. So tell me, we have, you know, a, a lighter up. What mm -hmm. other elements are we seeing on screen right now? Uh, so you're seeing the watch. Um, you're seeing a little blue light that indicates, it's like a, a light meter, so it indicates, um, you know, if you're uh, in, in, you know, an area of light which, you know, can tell you if you're visible or not. You, you have your compass, which kind of tells you the general direction that you need to be, you know, going. And then you have uh, uh, a meter that's just behind the watch. It's, you know, kind of barely visible there uh, that tells you uh, radiation levels in the area. And it, it's, this is something that we've always uh, uh, wanted to do for, again, immersion, um, you know, physicalizing uh, things that would normally otherwise be represented on a HUD, you know, with a number somewhere, you know, in a corner. Uh, we don't like to do that because we want, again, you know, you to feel like you're, you know, your screen should be a window that you pass through into this world. It shouldn't be, you know, you're sitting down to play a game. It should be you're, you're sitting down and transporting yourself into the world of Metro. So we've come up on another camp of the children in the forest here, and we have a choice between going loud and being quiet, and that has been a core part of the Metro franchise going all yeah. the way back to the beginning. Uh, tell me about the consequences of going loud and some of the challenges you'll face with either decision. So... Uh, you, you can choose to approach situations very differently, um, especially you know now in Metro Exodus because we've given a lot more f uh, freedom and choice and customization to the player. Um, you can use your backpack at any time to, to modify your weapons, uh, you know, changing their functionality and changing their attributes uh, by swapping out you know barrels and stocks and uh, scopes and things like that. Um, and so the player can really choose to, to approach things you know stealthy or you know all out. You know, guns blazing. Mm -hmm. um, however, this is a survival game, so if you do go in guns blazing, you might run out of ammo pretty quick. Um, and so you have to be scavenging all the time. You have to be, you know, trying to find resources in order to craft, uh, you know, more ammunition, uh, or you know, maybe finding some uh, some resources on on you know the the guys that you take out. Um, so if you do go in guns blazing, you have to be ready for it, and you have to be ready to, uh, you know, manage the resources that you have. You know, going in the, the game does. It, uh, kind of encourage stealth uh, uh, approaches to things because obviously then you're saving your resources. Um, but we try to give uh, the players as much freedom to approach any situation the way that they want to. And a lot of that comes from the loadout, the customization that you'll be choosing with your weapons and kind of uh, that informs your play style. What kind of cool attachments and various weapon uh, Tinkerings can we see in Metro Exodus? Um, well, every we so every weapon has uh, five hard points on it, uh, where you can change things like the barrel of stock, um, an attachment, uh, you know, scopes, sights, different things like that, uh, uh, magazines, um, and so you'll find uh, different weapons that actually completely change their functionality as you add uh, new new items to them. Um, you'll be able to uh, take something like a um, a shotgun that may may start with. Uh, uh, you know, uh, almost like a like a, a cylinder type magazine, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you can upgrade that to you know full on uh, 
you know, magazine that, you know, comes in underneath or, or you know, like a, a barrel underneath, uh, uh, like a drum. Sure, and you have, like, the six-shooter magazine. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and so, like, you know, from that point, then it turns into, you know, a semi-automatic shotgun, uh, effectively, and uh, you're able to... Um, to to change the amount of damage that you're you know that you're using you can put silencers on things that will you know maybe pull back on the damage but allow you to to shoot stealthily and then you know you can put on different barrels that might you know be really loud but at the same time do a lot more damage so th there's a, there's a lot of options that give players uh the opportunity to kind of change how they approach things great you know, whenever uh, they want so the nvidia 2080 release uh the ray tracing technology one of the games shown was metro exodus mm -hmm. uh tell me about your involvement with ray tracing, what it means in terms of uh, a high-level gamer coming into this game, they enable ray tracing, what's going to be the difference? Uh, so what we're doing with ray tracing uh, and, and NVIDIA technology is uh, real-time ray traced global illumination. So what you're seeing here is there's one source of light in this scene, and it's the sun. We're not using artificial lights uh, placed around in the environment. That's a pretty you know, standard way of doing things, or it has been uh, uh, in games to this point where we would place you know, potentially hundreds of, of, you know, light sources all over the place in order to make the environment look really good and, and, and make it look like light is bouncing everywhere realistically like it would. What you're seeing here is, is just, you know, one source of light that is bouncing around the environment, you know, using the ray tracing technology, and it just, it, it looks so much more natural. Um, it's lighting areas realistically, um, and, you know, s the awesome thing about this technology is <coughs> having having implemented it it's it, it's something that's a it's a you know it's in the name global illumination but it is a global solution to where you know we can go in and tune things afterwards and add in artificial lights if we want to enhance certain scenes on top of it but as you can see we don't really need to sure and there was a really interesting part in that demonstration with metro exodus <coughs> where there was kind of a rafter being shown in mm -hmm. a, uh, a barn and with uh, conventional lighting and rasterization the top was always illuminated, yeah. but with this global illumination, that means you can have parts of it that are kind of dark. So what does that allow you to do in terms of horror? Yeah, I mean, it will certainly, you know, in, in, in the case of, uh, you know, having the rafters above in, in the building, uh, you know, completely dark where, you know, there's maybe, a, you know, a little bit of a soft glow in the, in the rest of the room around you. Um, we can set, you know, atmosphere, we can set mood, and, uh, you know, we could potentially hide something up there that jumps out at you. <laughs> sure. So uh, finally, for folks who've been with the franchise from the very beginning, what are you most excited uh, for those players to get their hands on in terms of Metro Exodus? What do you think Metro Exodus is doing that is really pushing the envelope and pushing the franchise forward? Uh, well, specifically, I mean, definitely for the franchise, the, you know, the big thing this time around is adding those uh, open environments, uh, the, the open sandbox uh, style gameplay. Uh, it's something that's very new to the series. The past, you know, uh, the past two games were very linear in, in design and, and structure, and this time, you know, giving the player a lot more freedom and a lot more uh, opportunity to explore the world and really immerse themselves in the story and and in everything that is Metro, and and really, you know, have an opportunity to, uh, you know, sp spend some real, you know, quality time uh, in in, the, in these environments. I think uh, players are really going to enjoy that. Absolutely, can't wait. <coughs> Metro Exodus. We can uh, expect it on February 22nd on Xbox One, PS4, and PC. John, thank you so much for stopping by, showing us thank the you. game. Stay tuned because we've got a lot more games coming right here on IGN, so don't go anywhere.